During this tutorial, we're going to look at one of the ways that we can create a dynamic sphere volume using shaders within the Unreal Engine 4. We want to have control over certain parameters, such as the position, the falloff, and the size of that spherical volume. Inside of our content browser, let's navigate to the Materials folder. We'll right-click and create a new folder. We'll call this VFX. Inside of this new space, let's create yet another folder, and we'll call this Character VFX. Last but not least, we're going to create two new folders within our Character VFX folder. The first one is going to be called Materials, and the second is going to be called Mix. Within the Materials folder, let's create a new material. Let's go up to the upper left hand side of the content browser and click the button New. In the drop down, we'll go to Materials and Textures, and we'll choose New Material. Let's name this Mat underscore Volume Sphere Master. We'll double click this to open it, and I'm going to drag this tab onto our palette. Let's go ahead and set up a few of the basic parameters. For the base color, we want just a simple black. For the metallic color, we'll set it to a value of 0.5. We'll also set our specularity to a value of 1. And our roughness to a value of 0.2. So before we actually build the 3D volume, let's take a look at this in UV space. We'll start off by creating a texture coordinate. Within the properties, I actually want to set the U and V tiling to 2. Next, I want to add a value of negative 1. And what this is actually going to do is center those UV texture coordinates. Next, we want to actually multiply this by itself. We will now go ahead and split the channels by using a component mask. We'll set the first component mask to only mask out the red channel, and then we'll duplicate this and set it to mask out only the green channel. Now we'll simply take the red channel and the green channel and add them back together. And then we'll start previewing the add node. You can now see that we've created a circular gradient. Let's use a one minus, flip this, and clamp the value. You can now see that we've successfully created a circular gradient that's inverted and doesn't have any values outside of the 0 to 1 range. Now we can go a bit further by adding in a few other parameters that would allow us to change things such as the falloff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a power node by holding down E and left clicking. I'll plug the clamp into the base and then I will also plug a constant vector value into the exponent. We'll set it to a default value of 1, and we'll start previewing our power node. You can see that nothing has changed, but the moment that we modify the exponent value, we'll see that we can actually alter the falloff of our 2D circular gradient. You can see by setting the exponent to 2, we actually have created a feathered value around the edge. If we wanted to have this extremely feathered, then we could set it to a value of something like 8. 
Now what we want to do is we want to create this same exact effect, but in 3D, not just on a 2D sprite. To do this, we need to build it not within texture coordinates, but in world position. Let's go ahead and drag this out of the way, and we'll start building our 3D volume sphere. Let's create a world position node and a constant three vector value. I'm going to name this node collapse location. Now let's create a distance node. Let's plug the absolute world position into the A input, and then our B input will be the output of our collapse location. Next, let's build a parameter that allows us to change the actual size. So I'm going to create a constant, right click and convert it to a parameter. And this will be called size. Let's set up a default value of 64. And we'll also create a divide node. And we're going to divide the distance by the size. Last but not least, let's create a parameter that allows us to change the falloff. Once again, we're going to use a power node, holding down E and left clicking. We're going to connect the divide output to the base input of our power node. And the exponent is going to be a constant vector value. Once again, let's right click and convert this to a parameter. This will be called falloff. Let's go ahead and set a default value of 10. What I want to do next is I want to clamp this between a value of 0 to 1. So let's right click and create a clamp. Let's go ahead and connect this to the world position node. Now one thing that you'll notice is nothing is happening. And the reason being is because we actually need to lerp or blend between two separate values. Since this is going to be a world position visual effect where vertices are going to blend from a neutral state to a collapsed state, we need to set those parameters up accordingly. To do this, let's go ahead and build our linear interpolation node. We'll also create an add node, and what I want to do is I want to take this collapse location and invert it. We'll do this by holding down the O key and left clicking to create a 1 minus. Let's take the output of the collapse location and we'll flip it. We will then take this output of our one minus, plug it into B, and take our absolute world position and plug it into A. Now what we need to do is we also need to set up the vertex position state. To do this, we're going to create a multiply node. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the world position by a constant three vector value of zero, zero, zero. Now let's plug the multiply output node into A and the add output node into B. We will then take our constant clamp and use this as our alpha, plugging it into the alpha input of our lerp node. And we'll plug the output of our lerp node into our world position. Let's also bump the value of this up so we can see what's going on. Now to better help visualize what's actually happening, I want to also use this mask down here, which is generating the 3D spherical volume, to also be visible within the emissive channel. So let's create another linear interpolation node. And here I want to alert between a value of zero and then a glow color. And for default, let's set the glow color to be something quite bright. Once again, we're going to use this clamp node as the alpha. 
and plug our output into the emissive color. We can now see what's actually happening. Here we have a spherical 3D volume. And we can modify things such as the size and the falloff of that 3D spherical volume. But not only that, we can alter the position in which it lies within the 3D space. For instance, if we go to the collapse location and change the red channel value, which also symbolizes X, to something such as 100, then what we can see is the volume has changed location. Not only that, but now the vertex deformation is visible. Let's change the size to something larger. Let's say 200. We can now see that as this grew, more of the mesh is beginning to collapse in on itself. Let's also change the falloff to something less harsh. Let's say a value of 2. Once again, you can start to see that it's becoming feathered. Let's try something even lower. 0.2. Our volume has a very soft falloff now and is barely influencing the actual mesh vertices. Let's change to a different 3D object that will help us better visualize this. Let's try a cube. Here we can see it's only showing up on the side of the cube. Let's try to position it on one of the corners. We'll go back to our collapse location and we'll change the Y to 100. We can now see that we've successfully moved this to one of the edges on the box. Let's now move this up in the Z position. Let's also change the base color back to zero. To better visualize the actual collapsing effect, let's change the fall off back to a value of 10 and we can now see that the edge is starting to bow. We'll save our changes and open up a new map. Here, let's also right click and create a new material instance. I'm also going to move this to the proper folder. Let's select our material instance, click Control C, go to our characters folder, open up our hero mesh, and inside of the materials drop down, let's paste the name of the new material and click Enter. With our new material instance now applied to the character, let's close down our skeletal mesh tab, navigate to our viewport, and click Play. We can now see that our player mesh has our emissive color. However, when we walk outside of the volume, we can see that our mesh actually grows in size and distorts. The reason that this is occurring is because when we clamped the value between 0 and 1, it actually is outside of the range that we need. We need this to be clamped between a value of negative 1 to 0. The problem with doing this is, if we try to clamp it within the actual clamp, then the values become distorted and the math changes in a way that we don't want it to. In order to properly shift this to a negative value of negative 1 to 0, we'll create a subtraction node and a constant vector. We'll set the constant to 1. We'll then plug that value into the B input, and we'll plug the clamp into the A input. Let's now take the subtraction output and plug this into our alpha. We'll save our changes and play this again. You can now see that our mesh actually looks normal whenever we jump into the game. However, when we move towards the origin of our spherical volume mask, it actually collapses into nothing.
Now the thing is, if we would like to change this location, we can do it in several different ways. If we go back to our material instance, and we open this, remember that in here we have a parameter called collapse location. If we check this option within the material instance, we can actually change the location in which the origin of this mask sits. For instance, if we would like it higher in the sky, we could set the Z value to something like 1000. Now without any visualization tools, this can be pretty hard to get it in the place that you would like. One of the things that we can do is we can add a target. If we navigate to our modes tab, inside of our search classes, we can type in target. We can then click and drag a target point out into our world. Let's say that we want the collapse point to be at the corner of this box. We'll just simply move the target over, move it up just a bit, go into the details, and here we can see the location of this target. All we need to do is then copy paste these properties into our actual material instance. In X, we have negative 480. In Y, we have negative 460. And in Z, we have 80. Let's play this again. You can now see that if we move over towards this target point, it's changed. This can also be driven through code or through blueprint. You can also make a tool that is tied to the actual radius. That way, when you modify the size of the volume within the material instance, it will also show up inside of a geometrical brush. Here I've opened up the third person starter map, and I've done a few modifications. I've simply blocked out all of the sunlight, and I've set a particle effect here with a target point beneath it. When we click play, let's run up the stairs and interact. You can see that the moment that we get close to the actual particle effect, the origin of the spherical volume is also set at the origin of the particle effect location. This causes it to look like you're actually collapsing into the origin of the visual effect, and shows a good way that a marriage between shader visual effects and particle systems can be made to fully sell a more complex effect.